the short version is that we turn property imagery into data, right? Um, we work with a variety of companies from appraisers to valuation companies and automated valuation models, um, lenders, uh, property preservation and loss mitigation companies, a couple of different um, auction websites, and a variety of platforms like mobile apps and web apps. And that's all typically through API integrations of the AI and computer vision models that we build into their platforms. Um, we also, you know, in the US have a condition and quality database where we score all the properties on uh, the multiple listing service or MLS every day. And uh, one way that our customers use that today is for comp selection in appraisals and, and valuations. Um, and then we, we also have a condition adjusted ABM. Again, this is a, a US a specific product through a partnership with an ABM provider. Um, which we call an automated visual valuation, where we take the property photos, which can be from a listing and inspection, a homeowner can take them. It could even be just a street view photo. And we use those photos to improve the, the accuracy of the valuations. Um, and that's typically delivered in either like a CSV or a PDF format, um, but also of course, you know, in, in our API as well. Um, so, you know, we've been in the valuation space since 2018. We're very heavy um, in that space. That's always been an important focus uh, for us. Right. I am joined by Vin, um, who's the co-founder and CEO of Foxy AI. And uh, Vin, we are from a, from a new perspective, ex super excited to, to partner with with you and Foxy AI and um, revolutionize valuations in, in South Africa. So um, I'm going to kick off and, and ask you then just to, to tell us a little bit about yourself, your background in property. Um, I know there's an exciting story that that, um, that transpired before you, you started Foxy. So, so tell us a little bit more about yourself. Sure, happy to to jump into that. But you know, Jacques, first off, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure working with you and uh, and the team so far. Um, but like you said, I'm Vin Vomero, one of the co-founders of Foxy AI. And uh, before starting the company, I came from the real estate world. Uh, I started a property management company in 2009, which turned into a real estate development company that I ran for about 10 years and then um, started Foxy AI in 2018 to turn property imagery into data after um, I had an appraisal come back lower than expected. Um, that appraisal just sent me down a rabbit hole on valuations, AI and computer vision. And I learned that there was no way to assess property condition at scale. You just had to manually look at photos or physically visit the property. So um, we initially built models to assess both the condition and quality of a property from the photos uh, based on the same scale that appraisers uh, here in the US, which is a one through six scale where one is the best and six is the worst. And then over the years, um, that grew into a library of over 40 different uh, AI and computer vision models today. Excellent. Um, quite, a, quite an exciting journey. And um, I'm always always pleased to see how property people get into tech and, and um, uh, it's it's quite fascinating. So it leads me to my next question, which you kind of alluded to. So your migration into the prop tech and prop tech space and Foxy AI, well, what, apart from the fact that you got a, a bad appraisal and that you weren't happy with, what actually led you into the prop tech and the, eventually into Foxy AI? Sure. Well, that, that appraisal was really uh, the beginning. And um, I, I have a, a science, I think, mind and, and background. Um, I studied biology at Boston University. And, um, and so, you know, I've always kind of stayed on top of, uh, you know, the science and tech world, just doing a lot of research and reading papers. Um, and um, and when we had this appraisal come back lower than expected, um, I had been reading a lot about AI. This was um, probably 2016, 2017 timeframe. And, and I thought that this is probably, you know, a really good fit um, for, for AI computer vision. And 
what I initially did was, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Google Alerts, um, mm-hmm. but I set up Google Alerts for artificial intelligence and machine learning and computer vision. And, and every day in my inbox, you know, Google sends you a summary of uh, articles based on, you know, the alerts based on those keywords um, that you that you provide it. So, you know, I was starting to read a lot of articles about AI and computer vision and initially taking notes on all the different companies that popped up and what they were doing. And uh, I think when I hit about 200 rows in my Excel spreadsheet of just different, all these different companies, um, I stopped. Uh, I stopped keeping track of them, and I, but I had a really good sense of you know what companies were doing you know at the time, um, where the research and the technology you know was, and where it was where it was going, um, and um, and that kind of got the the, the the wheels turning. Um, I then uh, first started working with a machine learning shop out of Canada to build some initial models, and those didn't really work too well, but. Um, started talking with you know local friends and started going to some uh, technology meetups in the Boston area and was de- eventually introduced to um, a gentleman named Frankie who is uh, he's you know, kind of our uh, quasi CTO uh, and advisor on the, the AI machine learning side of uh, of the business. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Um... So I've got to ask you, we're nearing the end of 2024, and it's been quite a journey if you take 2018 and even your Google Alerts, it's, it predates chat GPT and all the all the fascinating AI technology that we that we have today. Um, looking at 2025, what can we can we expect from Foxy AI and what uh, what's what's cooking? I need to ask. Well, we have a lot of projects on the roadmap for 2025 and I don't want to spoil the surprise or get into too many specifics, um, but I, I like to think of how we develop new products and solutions kind of around some key capabilities and themes, which might give you some some insight into what's coming mm-hmm. in the future. Um, number one is, of course, solving customer pain points. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time listening to our customers and that helps us gain insight to anticipate um, their needs and innovate new products and solutions that are going to solve difficult problems for our customers quickly. Um, The next one is new research. So we employ a continuous research and development process that allows us to really take like the latest in industry advancements and integrate them into our tech stack and overall capabilities. which you know, allows us to layer the latest AI advances into our existing products, again, at a very rapid pace. Um, and finally, high quality data sets. Data is key to what we do and quality data, I think is one of the things that sets us apart from our competitors. And um, we use data across the business, not just for training our models, but also you know, providing performance analytics and dashboards. Um, so employing quality data sets you know, allows us to have the best models on the market. Um, so we're really, really excited for uh, for what's what's in store in 2025. Yeah, I think 2025 is the the year that we're going to see AI really taking off, and and especially in this uh, in the property industry. I think it's uh, it's uh, it's ready, and um, I'm I'm excited. Uh, what 2025 is going to hold in. Uh, so valuations, I need to ask, and, and you, uh, so here in South Africa, obviously we talk about a value or value valuations. Um, in the US it's called a, an appraiser or appraisal. Um, tell us um, why the quality and condition score is such an important um, aspect of a valuation or a, an appraisal. And from your observations, how has that um, the Foxy AI models contributed to enhancing that uh, the quality and condition scores in the valuation process? Yeah, I mean, look, condition is one of the most important property features when trying to determine property value, and um, that's really right behind the location of the property and the size of the home. Um, Automated valuation models typically assume average condition for all properties, you know, which is one reason they can be so inaccurate. You know, particularly on the tails of the distribution, you know, on the uh, the really nice properties and the properties that are in in, in bad condition. 
and giving the value valuation model uh, eyes, if you will, using computer vision dramatically improves the accuracy of the valuations. We've seen anywhere from a five to 10% improvement in the PPE 10, um, which is you know, a very common measure of AVM accuracy. Um, and you know, when AVMs, they've been around for many, many years at this point, um, and when folks are trying to squeeze out, you know, one or even, you know, 2% uh, improvements and we're able to provide a, you know, five to 10% improvement um, when incorporating the condition from property photos, that's a very signif significant improvement. And I need to ask you in your, in your feedback that you get from your clients in the, in the models that you provide, and you mentioned five to 10% uh difference in, in, especially when you look at the condition of the property. Um, does that differ geographically or can you space, uh, or do you think that's a universal um, percentage that can be applied? When you say geographically, do you, are you referring to, um, you know, just in the U.S. or international as well? Yeah, let, let's take a U.S. Um, uh, case study as an example, if you move between different states and mm -hmm. you look at the condition of properties, it's, it, you, do you find that it's universal across the board? It, it is actually. So um, condition and, and even quality to, to some extent um, are kind of location agnostic, right? Like a property that's in good condition in you know downtown Manhattan is still you know going to be good condition if you take that property and you move it to um let's say upstate new york or something like that right you know a, a less active uh market um so it's very location agnostic um however you know as particularly in the us it's it's a very big country and you have uh, a very wide variety of qualities and architectural styles and of course conditions um all across the us and so it is very important to um, you know, build uh, you know a data set of, of properties that you know tries to cover you know as many of those as possible. Um, at the end of the day, I think one reason that that real estate is such an interesting computer vision and AI problem is that uh, the, the combinations of quality and condition and styles is, is basically infinite. You know, there are no two homes that are exactly alike. Um, and, uh, and so you really need to make sure that you have a very large, very robust data set that tries to cover you know, as many of these as possible when you go to build these models. Absolutely, yeah. So coming back to the future and the future predictions, I have to ask you because owning and uh, buying a home is a universal, uh, doesn't matter if in the US or in South Africa or any other country for that matter. What predictions do you have for the future of real estate in this journey, specifically in relation to prop tech. Um, and I've noted you've attended quite a number of um, conferences over the past few months. What what can you tell tell us and, and the audience about, around the predictions of prop tech mm -hmm. and, and where that's gonna lead to in the in the real estate industry? So specifically here in the US as a I guess a reaction to the um, the commission changings from the Department of Justice ruling on how agents get paid. It's a pretty recent uh, development in the past you know, year or so. Um, we've seen some interesting you know, virtual solutions pop up. You know, for example, uh, AI powered buyers agents to assist buyers. Um, we've also seen you know everyone try to to crack the AI home search problem with. I think varying degrees of success. And um, I think that's going to be something that's interesting to uh, keep an eye on as AI capabilities get better and better and as data sets become you know, more ubiquitous um, and hopefully as uh, the real estate market um, you know, continues to, to pick back up, uh, more properties come on the market and those home search uh, capabilities become more important. Um, as we, I think as we look like globally, there are, a lot of common solutions that we see, you know, just emerging across uh, across markets. And of course, we touched on earlier, property valuations across the board are getting more accurate. Um, we've started to see condition and quality enhanced AVMs using utilizing property uh, imagery becoming more mainstream. Appraisals can now be completed 
very accurately in a much shorter amount of time with the help of computer vision uh, that captures, of course, the quality and condition of the home, as well as many other property features. Um, and we can also you know, reduce uh, the amount of uh, you know, appraisal uh, bias, if you will, um, by utilizing these models. So the possibilities on how much you know these how much impact these advances could have on the valuation and underwriting process, I think, um, cannot be you know really understated over the next couple of years. And then overall, I think PropTex will continue to to contribute to you know efficiency plays and cost savings and or time savings across the whole real estate stack. Um, I think we'll see a rise in these virtual solutions to things that now right now require human you know, property visit or just a person in the loop, as an example. Um, I think we'll see a lot more transparency in the markets with uh, pricing along with you know, the efficiency improvements leading eventually to more standardization um, by employing you know, technology. Um, so I think it's going to be really exciting an exciting 2025, but also I think an exciting couple of years um, yeah. for the entire real estate ecosystem as they begin to really adopt and reap the benefits of AI and other new technologies as they come on the scene. Absolutely. So I've got to ask you a final question and it relates to something you just um, touched on. Um, listening to you talking about agents and virtual agents and um, there's this, uh, this message that goes in, across in the industry that AI is going to take my job away. Um, what do you say about uh, comments like that? I don't think it's it's a completely unfounded um, you know, concern or, or thought by people. Um, you know, I think, look, every, I think, a lot of people at this point have heard this quote, you know, it's not AI that's going to take your job. It's going to be somebody that's utilizing AI that um, is going to, to take your job. And I think everybody should be experimenting with these tools, even if it's um, you know, just playing around with, with chat GPT. Um, I kind of think about it similar to, you know, the early days of, of, of Google like before that. I think people didn't really know how to think about, you know, what they wanted to type into a search bar. Um, and it took people a little while to, to understand what they needed to punch in in order to get the results they were looking for. And in a similar way with AI today, like it's a, it's a slightly different thought process. And so you need to get used to working with um, these different tools and how you can uh, you know, prompt them to get the results that that you're looking for. Um, so I think in you know a lot of cases, um, there are going to be you know people that um, I think more so like leave certain jobs because uh, there are just other opportunities for them elsewhere. Their jobs are becoming more efficient. Uh, focus on is. Uh, really the, the efficiency gains that people um, can uh, can realize from using these tools. Well, that's, uh, that was a great interview and thank you for taking the time and, and talking talking to me and I uh, really appreciate that. And su like I said, super excited to, to join this journey with Foxy AI and uh, wishing you and the team at Foxy all the best uh, for 2025. Wonderful. Thank you again for having me, Jack. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. And um, again, it's been a pleasure working uh, with the team and, and looking forward to, to doing more with you all. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it.